Hello and welcome to the review on the A Trip to the Moon podcast. My name's Matt Jones and, uh, well, a happy new year to all of you because, uh, well, what a time Tranmere are having at the moment. A fourth straight victory for Rovers, this time a 4-2 defeat of Notts County, which means they are firmly looking up the table instead of down it as they were a few weeks ago. And, uh, well, history in the making as well. We'll talk about all of that as the show wears on. Delighted to be joined uh, by Dave Stone and by Phil Davis. Thank you to both of you for giving up some of your uh, your New Year's Day evening to have a look back on what was a particularly thrilling afternoon. So let's start with yourself, Dave. We'll look through some of the, 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 the moments of the game individually shortly, but just how enjoyable an afternoon was this? Do you know what? It was a superb performance in the second half. And I think that the, the thing for me is that obviously we've had a, a, the best Christmas in our history. I mean, I think it's the first time we've won four out of four games, which is just, just astonishing. But progressively, I think, got better and better and better. You know, the, the performance away at Salford was superb against a poor team, in, in all honesty. Then we met a stronger Harrogate team uh, on Tuesday night and were sensational in the second half there. Um, and today, I thought, just took the biscuit. I think that second half performance was superb. You know, you, you can go through 1-11 to 11 and not have a bad word to say about anybody. I thought we scored at a really crucial point in the game, the, the equaliser, um, just before half-time. Um, I think Nigel's comments before the game were, were quite interesting to me, where he, you know, he kind of put a bit of cold water on the form and said that, you know, it's going to be a tough game. That the fans need to get behind us. They need to to kind of keep, you know, it's going to be a tough game and not lose them. And sat in the cup, I was starting to hear a few shouts and people were starting to get a little bit restless. But we were playing a really good team with some really, really good players on the pitch today. And they took stock, they equalised when it mattered and they destroyed them in the second half. It was fantastic to see. Come on, Phil. <laughs> um, well, embarrassingly, the last game I went to was against Wrexham at home. So, chalk and cheese. Uh, brilliant. That, that, as Dave said, that second half performance, that was unbelievable. That was like 90s tram. Yeah, that was wingers pacing up and down, fullbacks going around. James Norris, by the way, was terrific today. It was, <clears throat> was it his full debut, debut or something? Because he was great. Um, really good performance. Um just brilliant. We just absolutely bombarded them. Um, I said to you, Matt, I, I missed Tramia's first two goals with an embarrassing kebab incident, which um, <laughs> which happened uh, which happened at the start of the half. I was in a queue and missed missed the goal, and then went went down towards the end of the half in another queue for it. I missed I missed another Tramia goal, and I was like, "This is unbelievable." Caught the last two though, which is great. But um, but going down at half time. Um, I was on Notts County absolutely dominating us. So they played some really good football, really good footballing team. Um, and then obviously missed the second goal, but to come in 2 2. And Nigel's pretty good at team talks, uh, half time team talks. I, I was confident that we would get on and win the game, to be fair, but just fantastic. Robbie after as well, just streamed down the wings. Just really good second half performance. So yeah, bring on the playoffs. I think Robbie will let you off. We will let you off having not seen a game because uh, you, you you have had a second child during that period of time. So that there's, there's been mitigating circumstances. We'll let you off. Go on, Dave, give us give us your thoughts on Rob Apter because another stunning performance from him. I, do, I disagree. I think he's he's really, really let us down in his time here. And I think for, for the good of his development, I think he really needs to, to stay here a little bit longer and, and progress. I was absolutely gutted. I don't know if anyone saw the Notts County manager's comments after the game. Um, he, in his interview, he said that it was the best individual performance he'd seen this season and that he absolutely tore them to bits. And I was sitting there glowing and also thinking, shut up, don't tell anybody. But I think I think the secret's out now with Rob Alter, isn't it? And, um, you know, I, the pessimist in me thinks surely to goodness Blackpool don't have something better than that on the right wing at the moment. Forgive me, I don't know what their, what their side's like. I know that they're doing all okay in the league. Um, He's been an absolute delight, hasn't he? he? He's clearly really enjoyed his time here. We've certainly enjoyed watching him. 
I think that, you know what well, one of the things I'll say about him was that he was a little bit in danger of becoming a one trick pony. You know, it, it, going down the right, cutting inside, shooting with his left foot, and and people kind of picked up on that. So it was really quite refreshing a couple of times today to see him actually get to the byline and and, and get a cross in and, and and not do the obvious. Um, I think he kind of assisted one of the goals, also an indirect assist for one of the goals doing that. Um, super player, super player to have all that all that talent and technical ability and pace. Um, he's just making a mockery of some of the defenders in, in, in this division. I don't know what I have to do, go to church every Sunday and promise to help old people cross the road, but please, please, something happen and keep that fellow at the club because... Yeah, he's been an absolute breath of fresh air, hasn't he? It's no coincidence that Tramis form has been so good since he came into the side. And and I think the, the, the saving grace potentially for Tramis could be that I don't think Blackpool play with out-and-out out wingers like he is. They play more with wing backs, more of a 3-5-2 or 5-3-2, depending on, on how you look at it. And that might help them uh, to a degree, but we'll see what happens on that front. Uh, you mentioned it right at the top. Uh, Dave, it's been a historic Christmas period for Tram. We've looked at the stats. It's the first time ever that they've won all four games over the Christmas period. If you take into account the Christmas period being the final weekend before Christmas and the first weekend of the new year. Now, there have been several occasions of them picking 10 points up during that kind of run. I think there was one between 2005-06. Uh, which is remarkable given how bad they were that season and, and nearly got relegated. Uh, there was yeah. one in, of getting nine in the 2017-18 season, the win at Sutton starting things off when uh, Connor Jennings scored an absolute screamer, actually, and then they lost 5-2 against Fylde on New Year's Day. They were absolutely awful that day, and, and so that's an incident of getting nine. When I was having a look through the history books, there was actually an occasion when Tramley played on the 25th, 26th and 27th of December and won all three matches and then contrived to lose their uh, game over the New Year period. So the footballers who, who play today in Mona about having three games over a six or seven day period do not know their ball on that Tramley side uh, back then. Certainly picked up some momentum and, and found things uh, pretty uh, good going. But th this historic run, this four game period, it has completely turned around how we are feeling about this season. And it's now not just a case of going, oh, they might be, you know, they might be mid table. It, it, it is very much looking higher than that now. Yeah, the, the squad morale just seems to have gone right up. Like, I've obviously not been to the games, but I've seen them on iFollow, I've seen the, the highlights. You've seen, you see the players like whipping the fans up into a frenzy. You see like Regan Henry shouting, um, like get get in and everything. You see that you saw that. You see McAleer with Apta. Is the squad morale just seems absolutely tipped up? Adkins is passionate. He's one of the um the videos that went on Twitter about today was all the management staff and everybody celebrating the goal wildly. And it's it all seems to be coming together in the last few games. Um <clears throat> so long may it continue because I mean I was a bit worried about today, especially with a relatively big crowd, and you know what Tramia. I like playing, playing with big crowds, but again, another great win. So let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. I think, I think as a team, the the the, the difference between how we started out the season and, and the shape of us and the very narrow fullbacks getting absolutely pulverised down each wing in every game, the shape that we have now, we're really compact, press aggressively, really great to watch. But it's not just... The team, it's the individuals. I mean, Kieran Morris is in the form of his life at the moment. He has been absolutely sensational the last few games. He's um, He seems to have, have found himself in a system where, you know, for, for me, I think Kieran Morris is the most technically gifted player we've had at Tranmere for a long, long time. But he's exposed by his lack of pace. But he seems to have a... a, a, a role and position in the team now where that's actually not, not as important. Um, Great finish for his goal today. I, I was absolutely made up for him because he's waited patiently and he's he's waited for his opportunity. He wasn't in the team when Nigel took over. He's waited for his chance and, and boy, has he taken it. And across the park, you know, it, it's just astonishing to think that he's not really added, he's not added any players to, to that squad of lads that he took over. Um, and, the, the, you know, the transformation is just ridiculous. 
Um, competition for places, which which we haven't had. I thought um, McAleer when he came on, McLear, McAleer when he came on against Harrogate was excellent. And today, I thought he slotted into that side really well. A um, little bit positionally naive at times, I think. I don't know if you guys both both noticed. We seem to be sitting off them quite a lot whenever they have the ball. Um, like whereas you know normally we tend to like that aggressive press get in your face, but we t- we seem to be kind of three or four paces off them and, and kind of you know you've got the ball. What what are you going to do with it? Kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, just running out of two places. I think it's the mark of the team that. You're looking at McAleer having come in and it's made no difference despite the fact that he's replaced Brad Walker who was pivotal to the run that Tranmere were on previous. You're looking at Norris, as you say, Phil, coming into the side, barely kicked a ball over the last two or three months, but comes into the side at Harrogate and does a really good job. Now gets a start in this game because Wood's out injured. And again, it makes no difference. If, if three or four months ago you'd said to us that Tranmere will be winning games against a high-flying Notts County team and winning them, not, not with ease, but with, with a degree of comfort. But they were doing so without Norris, without Walker, without their first-choice left-back. You'd be going, no, that's not happening. But actually, it, it, you wouldn't have noticed that the, the star striker or the key midfielder wasn't there today. No. Yeah, it's, I mean, as you say, everyone seems to be pulling together. I mean... The uh, McAleer said in the post match, like if he doesn't perform well, then someone behind him will come through, like Chris Merry or whatever. I mean, Chris Merry was like a key to our midfield last season. He can't even get a game on the boat, or get, get in the squad really. So it just shows how well everyone's playing at the moment. As you said, McAleer, I, I always liked him. I liked him at the start of last season, but he got sent away and stuff. So I'm glad he's back in. Um, but it just shows how well everyone's doing. Um, so yeah, I'm just, as you said, Dave, running out superlatives, just really, it's just a good time. Just the magic's back. Yeah, I thought, the magic's back. I thought Saunders was excellent today as well, but before he came off, you know, that that pace and the work rate and his ability to to chase down everything. I mean, I mean if we are going to be hypercritical and look for things that, that, that could be improved, I think, Luke McGee, it's really harsh to say anything negative about him. He, he's he, what a season he's having between the posts. Too many times for me, he, his distribution lets him down a little bit, and the, there's some long balls that <coughs> really, really could be a useful kind of outlet for for Harvey Saunders to be chasing onto. We're, we're overhit time and time again, and you know I'd like to think that Joe Murphy has him doing a bit of uh, practice at regulating the the the. the speed and, and pace that, that he's hitting the ball but you know that it feels a bit churlish to, to kind of to to analyze to, to that level of depth but yeah no Saunders I thought was excellent Apter was brilliant um and Connor Jennings you know what, what it's just Connor Jennings isn't it there's nothing else you can really say it's just you know you think what that fella's been through um you know we're talking about a guy who's coming back to play football after having cancer you know, he's had the, the. We've seen him come off the out of his hospital bed in a playoff final and, and and score a goal. I was a little bit underwhelmed when when we we signed Connor Jennings, but bloody hell, have I been made to look stupid because he is, for me, twice the player that he was. But before he left, the the, the ability that he has, him and Morris actually, the technical ability to to control a ball and bring it down and play the right pass is almost a hundred percent of the time. You know, it's ridiculous like how pivotal those those two are in terms of of the way that we play. Um yeah, that just superb throughout the whole team. My window froze then and it wouldn't let me click back onto mm-hmm. it because I was just looking up some stats. Uh, Connor Jennings onto nine goals in the league for this season now for Tranmere. Their top scorer last year was Josh Hawks with 10 league goals. So already on the 1st of January, Tranmere's top scorer for this season is only one behind the top scorer for last year. He's also on to 45 league goal, uh, sorry, 45 goals for Tranmere in league and cup competitions over his two spells with the club. Now, I think I'm right in saying that there have only been four players who have reached 50 or more goals for Tranmere this side of the year 2000. 
Greenacres one, Nord and Cook are the other two. And then you've got Ian Thomas Moore, who did it over two spells. So he scored a dozen or so in his first spell and then added to that significantly in his second spell. So Jennings is, is on the brink of doing something fairly extraordinary for a Tranmere player because it just isn't done on a regular basis. He's also now only two goals behind Jim Steele in terms of the number of goals he's got for a Tranmere player. As I said, when we did the last podcast, he's already ahead of Kumas and Marm and Nevin. And I'm not saying he's as good a player as those three, but the influence and the impact that he's had on the club is getting towards being pretty close to the impact that those players had during their time in a Tranmere shirt. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah de- definitely. He's a, he's, a, he's a club legend, isn't he? As you said about the um, the ballroom wood um, coming back from the hospital bed and everything, that just shows what kind of person he is. He's just an absolute, just dedicated and he's just true professional. And he's, he's if Tom Davis wasn't here, he'd be, he'd be the captain of Tramier Rovers. Like, he, I think he's already vice, isn't he? He's just, he's like the same with you, the same as Dave, really. I wasn't underwhelmed. I, I, I thought he'd be a squad player. Like a rotation, but he's 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 just got he's just number one in the team all the time, isn't he? He's just brilliant, great player. Some engine as well, you know. Yeah. A lot, you know, he's got, he's knocking on a little bit, and it, you know he has been the, the beating heart of, of that team in a lot of games in a very short space of time. And actually, I you know I, I think the the thing that the real difference between the two sides today was our fitness. Actually, I, th- I thought that they they looked tired towards the end, and we were pressing and pressing and pressing. Um, you know, we've be- we've beaten a really really quality side four two and missed the penalty. Um, yeah, fantastic. Normally I come on here. Yeah. Normally I come on here after we've got beaten and I have to find like lots of different <laughs> ways to how terrible we were. I need to get my thesaurus out for some positive words. <laughs> it's, it's, not- it's interesting. We had we had Phil Adley on the other day, and he was saying exactly the same thing. It's it's, it's much harder to prepare for a, a win than it is to prepare for a defeat because there's so much more to say, so much more moaning to do. But instead, we're just throwing superlatives at the club at the moment, and that's a, a wonderful position to be in. Some of the comments that are coming in, please do get in touch on YouTube, and I'll go through some of the Twitter comments in a moment or so. But uh, Matt says the worry is that someone else tables a bid uh, for Apter and uh, that Blackpool are swayed. Well. I think I'm right in saying that Apt has already played for Blackpool and Tranmere this season, so I think that means he can't play for another club this year. I may be wrong on that, but I think that's right uh, this season. I think that is the case. I may be wrong, um, but if that is if that is the case, then that certainly works in Tranmere's favour. Uh, David, the not supporters were complaining about their lack of competition for places. Just read that the Barrow supporters are claiming the same thing. We may be in a very good position in comparison. David Hughes, the fact that Jennings was performing to the same standard before Adkins came in uh, speaks volumes about his character. He should know from all of us how much he is valued. He certainly should. Uh, plenty of value being thrown his way this evening. Look, let's... Let's look at that league table now then, because it, it is absolutely remarkable what Trammy have done. They've picked up this. They, uh, let's say this first of all. Since the start of December, they've picked up more points in league games than they picked up in the entirety of Ian Dawes' time in charge as both interim and permanent manager. He only managed 13. Trammy have picked up 15 League Two points since the start of December. So that says something about the form that they're in now and the form that they were in then, to be fair. But in the terms of the league table, 15th now, 15 points clear of the bottom two. Only six, six behind Wimbledon, who drew today and sit in the final playoff spot. I mean, it's getting agonisingly close, isn't it? That gap is decreasing on an almost weekly basis at the moment. It is. And we've got, so we've got a good goal difference as well. I'm just looking at it now. We've got positive goal difference whereas people around us have got negative goal difference so we could technically go up to 11th with our next win that's unbelievable isn't it it's dizzying heights that so there's a there's a lot a few people i know that got a couple of wise quit on tramir to reach the top seven when mr Dawes was removed from post i know I've seen someone on Twitter saying they got five hundred to one. I know someone who got two hundred and fifty to one, and had a, had a nice little, nice little flutter on that. Um, starting to look like very silly odds now. Six points off the playoffs with half a season still to go. Yeah, 
I think what's really it's going to be really interesting the next couple of games now because the, the <coughs> we've got some good sides coming up. I think we've got Barrow, uh, MK Dons, and, and MK Dons who who are both up there. I think if we can get through those two with four points, you know, I think that you know I said I said last week when I when I uh, sent you the message, Matt, that there's only one way this team's leaving this division, and that's at the top end of it. And I think you know at the moment it's a little bit. Well, it could happen. It's happened before. You know, Bolton had less points than we were on at this stage and they finished third in automatic. Bristol Rovers were on less points than we were on at this stage and they finished third with automatic promotion. Be really interesting to see where we are in a couple of couple of games' time. Um, Nigel Atkins, what a man. I'm not sure what he got sent off for today, by the way. I, I yeah. missed it. Does anyone, Matt, do you know? We picked up two yellows. That was as much as I saw. Um, it, you, you don't tend to be watching that area of the field when the, some of those incidents happen, do you? And it's something, obviously, right. that the fourth official has relayed. If anyone in the comments knows, let us know. Uh, it'd be good yeah, to be I missed that one as well. <laughs> you missed everything, Phil. Um, I, I did. Like, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I, think went, like, I just like, came back and it's like, why is everyone cheering? Or why is everyone booing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I just stayed outside. The thing about the form recently is the results have come against teams who you would generally expect Tranmere to win their matches against. Swindon haven't been in good form. Tranmere beat them. Uh, Newport haven't been in good form. Tranmere beat them. Salford have been in terrible form and have sat their manager and Tranmere beat them. Harrogate, slightly better form, but Rovers managed to get a, a result against them. You felt that this was where the hard work was going to really start or that the, 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 the standard of the opposition went up a notch, if you like. And, and Tramby have passed that test with flying colours. And I think that's why, coming out of today's game, people are significantly more excited than they were perhaps after the Harrogate or Salford matches because Notts County, let's face it, are a much better team. The points and their league position show that than a Harrogate or a, a Salford. And Tramby have managed to completely dethrone them. Uh, I, I dread to think what would have happened if Ian Dawes was in charge today. Like, I, I, I saw Tramia play Harrogate when Indoors was manager. I think that was the last win I saw. And um, we, I think we won 3 0, but they absolutely battered us in the second half. And like, it's like, so I, 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 I dread to think what would have happened. I mean, yeah, it was, so it was just a lot more organised. Notts County were really good. They, they remind me of Forest Green from, was it last season, a couple of seasons ago when they battered us? Um, they, the, some of their play was excellent. I think their second goal was really, really good today. Um, but as Dave said, I think I think they tied. I think they tied second half, and we steamrolled them. Absolutely steamrolled them. So yeah, they were a really good team, but we stood up to the task and yeah, bring on Barry. I'll tell you what would have happened if Ian Jules was in charge today. I think uh, Norris would have been substituted after forty minutes, wouldn't he? I mean. It's <laughs> It's worth mentioning, actually, yeah. what a tough set of circumstances he's come back from. It is yes. one of the worst bits of individual man management that I've ever seen when they substituted Norris 40 minutes in, into his professional debut in, in that, that no injury, just the kind of tactical change, hooked him off five minutes before half-time. Get the lad to half-time, have a word with him and, and make the change there. Um, he's, he, he's waited, he's waited patiently. There's a uh, the, you know, Wood, who I think has been excellent um, since he's come in, has got an injury. I'm not sure how long he's out for, but I don't have any worries there after today. I think I think Norris would had, had an excellent game, and it was really nice to see when he got substituted off after half time this time towards towards the final whistle to see all the senior pros go over and give him a slap on the back and, and, and say well done because he, he was excellent today and, and, and the full credit to him. Yeah, he's highly rated at Liverpool, isn't he? He's so when when, the, when he made the move, there were I've got a few friends who are Liverpool fans, and they said, "Oh, he's a really good player, like good at youth level." So, um, but he showed it today. He showed that he's a good, good quality player. It's a lot easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier to bring in a, a youngster to a team that's flying and, and doing well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that might have been some of the reluctance to let Mr. Kumas' son come to us, which was heavily rumoured at the beginning of the season. Well, they might have a different decision to make now with an experienced manager at the helm and the team in resurgent form. And be interesting to see what we can add if we what 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 we do add. Um, we know that we're going to have one essential new signing coming into the team towards the end 
of as, as the season gets to the business end when Luke Norris comes back into the team. But what other what other reinforcements can we make in the market? Can, can we keep hold of Apta? If not, you know, who else can who else can we add? Be interesting. I don't Just, know if I, go on. Well, they they need they need something <coughs> if Apta goes, don't they? Uh, just on Norris, he is someone who did sign on loan until the end of the season, so there's no fear about him uh, going anywhere else at the moment unless Liverpool decide to recall him and, and, and hopefully uh, they won't based on today's showing. I've looked up the stats for Rob Apta. Uh, Rob Apta has now started 11 league games for Tranmere. His first one was the defeat at Sol uh, Stockport. Uh, before then, he'd just been getting substitute appearances here and there. But he started the defeat at Stockport so he started 11 successive league games for Tranmere, won seven, drawn two, lost two. It's no coincidence, surely, that uh, Tranmere are absolutely flying when they've got someone like that in the side and playing as well as he is and creating the chances that he is. Uh, let's look at some of the tweets that we got after the game anyway, because... Uh, Bags of them. I love this. There were so many people getting in touch after the match today, which was wonderful to see because it's, as I say on here many times, it's not always the case after a victory that you get loads and loads of people uh, getting in touch, but certainly uh, they were today. Uh, let's start with uh, Will Alton, who just says, Rob Apsa, blimey, what a player. Uh, what a kid with so much potential. Uh, Northeast Super White Army got in touch. Another outstanding performance with a game plan that nullified their threats. Second half, uh, we were the better team and fully deserved the three points. This team may not be technically the best we've ever had, but at the moment they're showing heart and determination. Uh, Guy Fagan, the transformation is absolutely breathtaking. Four wins out of four over Christmas is ridiculous for any team. Even more astounding with a bunch of players that looked ahead, uh, looked like they were heading for the National League two months ago. Uh, Phil Denton, resilience and discipline in the first half and then aggressive and explosive in the second. Just brilliant. We look like we have a clear way of playing against teams that control possession or play directly. Half-time adjustments are fantastic too. On to Barrow. Uh, Phil Adley, outstanding performance in the second half. Thought we stood off them in the first and that played into their hands. But for all their possession, they created little. Tranmere's work rate has been incredible the past month. The Adkins influence cannot be underestimated. Uh, Mike Crisp, what a game. Came out of the traps fast on the ropes for 20 minutes after Morris's opener and came back with Jennings' counterpunch before the break. Second half, fantastic to a man. Great tactics to catch them on the break. For all their possession, they were vulnerable at the back. Uh, Rob Tyler, Unbelievable win. To score four goals against one of the best teams in the division is a credit to Nigel. He's got the Rovers cooking. Four games, 12 points. Dare we dream? Six points off the playoffs, 15 points from the drop. Uh, Steve says, pure effort and desire there. Very difficult to play against Notts County. They keep the ball so well and put us under extreme pressure. But they are weak defensively and we really took our chances. Every man, 10 out of 10 today. But have to give special praise for Jennings. What a machine. Peter Bailey ran their legs off and worked uh, themselves to a standstill. What a second half. There will be teams looking over their shoulders at Tranmere now. Ian Richards, absolutely outstanding against a really good side. So many looking dead on their feet at times, but they kept going. Adkins has worked miracles at the superb, both going forward and tracking back. But was that a last effort to sign off with? Uh, Norris also deserves a big mention. You can see the tweets are all on a very, very similar trend. People full of praise for Tranmere. Uh, Simon Jones says, as someone who didn't rate the squad earlier in the season, the Atkins transformation has shown how much the mental side of the game can be underestimated. Now playing with belief and confidence. Uh, MDTRFC, absolutely superb again from every single player today. Playoffs is well and truly on. Uh, Jackson says, McAleer is what we need from now on in that midfield. Protects the back four, not scared of a challenge. Great flair, all round baller. And uh, old mate Bry, I love this message. He just says, Brilliant match, Super White <coughs> Army. Uh, there was also a tweet that came in uh, that just said, um, and Who was this off? This was off Phil. Phil says, As a side note, what on earth was Dawes doing with these players before he got let go? I mean, that is a question because the players were floundering, weren't they? And now they are absolutely flying. Tweets there mentioning the playoffs. How, how realistic should that be? How, how close to those top seven places can and will Tranmere get, Dave? I, I don't think the playoffs are realistic for us. I think it's automatic or bust. I, <laughs> I think we, we should set our sights higher than. No, I, I get, we're six points off. You know, we, we are putting in some incredible performances. 
everything's coming together at the right time. If you're going to get into the playoffs, you always want to be that team that comes from nowhere and gets into the playoffs. We might need to slow it down a little bit, to be honest, and not get, not get ourselves in there too early. Um, you know, even on, even under doors, I don't think we, we were awful. I don't think we were terrible. There was always a glimmer of light. And there always seemed to be the opportunity there. What Atkins has done to them is turned them into a team and a unit who know what they're doing. They, they, they all play well with each other. There's a, a brilliant rapport with the fans. Nigel loves it, doesn't he? Clapping along to Super White Army. And, you know, there's absolutely no reason why this team cannot get into the playoffs. And, and you know, as I mentioned earlier, Bolton and Bristol Rovers came from nowhere, didn't they? And they didn't get in the playoffs. They both finished third and went up automatically. So three go up, plenty of time, keep this form up and, you know, Nothing is nothing is impossible, and, and what felt a bit like a uh, over optimistic, happy clapper sentiment of you know, you know what I've been saying to my to my son who have got a season ticket with. Oh, don't write this off yet. We could do it. We could do it. And actually, I'm starting to believe it myself now. I'm not just saying it to keep him keep him positive about it. Absolutely believe that that, that it's on. Yeah, uh, as as Smash Mouth, Mouth says, I'm a believer as well. So I mean, it's six six points away. So, and as I said, the goal difference the goal difference is quite good. We've it, get come through these couple of games against Barrow, MK Dons. If we could pick up four points from there, obviously happy days, isn't it? And we've got Swindon coming up. We've got other teams coming. up. I mean, why not? The, together, everyone achieves more. The the unity is definitely there. The performances are fantastic at the moment. So. Bring it on. It was, it's like together, similar, it's similar to a... Go on. Sorry, Matt. I was going to say, together everyone achieves more is going to be the new motto that's painted on the uh, changing room wall, isn't it, Within by the end of the season, <laughs> especially if Tranmere go up. Go on, carry on. It's similar to, the new, to um, when we beat Newport, isn't it, in the, in the final. It's similar to that season, I think. Didn't we come from mid-table and get the last playoff? place was not right well that i mean there was that not quite that there was a situation in that season where Tranmere going into the penultimate game of the season could have still gone up automatically uh, but they drew against berry and that uh, prevented them from doing so and they then kind of rotated their squad significantly for the final game of the season and lost uh, 3-1 to crawley um but also that that year that the run started later, so they were cut, they were they were always there or thereabouts. And then there was that defeat to Mansfield, the infamous defeat to Mansfield in January. The transfer window started to take full effect towards the end of that month when Perkins had come in, and uh, numerous other arrivals as well. I think Sid Nelson uh, joined at some point during that month. Uh, ben Pringle came in as well, and, and over February and March time, I think there was a run of seven wins out of nine. So. That the run started a little bit later, and that, that's that's the only concern that I have is that this run now has to carry on being this good, or well, not necessarily four wins out of four, but it, it has to be probably four wins out of every six games with a draw and a defeat thrown in there if they're going to get into the top seven. Which over half a season is a big ask. You you can have months like that. I don't want to pour water on it, but that can happen to do it over half a season it is going to be a big ask especially if it is the same 11 being used week in week out which is feasible when injuries are already taking their toll why not though i don't think we should fear anybody in this division you know mansfield they beat stockport 2-0 and with win their two games in hand and they're you know they're clear at the top of the division. I thought we played them off the park when we played Mansfield away. I thought we were absolutely superb. I know, I know we only got a draw out of the game, I think, if, if memory serves. Um, but I thought it was a, a really strong performance for us. I don't think we should fear anybody. I think other teams will be fearing us now. And <clears throat> with that, we'll come into own pressures and, and, and problems where I think coming under the radar, I think, you know, maybe teams expect to get an easy ride against us and, you know, it's going to be... <clears throat> have some pretty obvious ways to get at us and to, to, to score goals against us. Nobody's going to want to be coming to Prenton Park. And having not won a away game since Jesus was a child, we've won two in a row. And, you know, happy Christmas, everybody. And good luck to anybody 
entertaining Tranmere at their place because I, 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 Nigel very eloquently talked about the boulder and giving it a nudge and get, getting some momentum and it's starting to roll. I wouldn't want to get in the way of that boulder at the moment because it is screeching down the hill. I mean, look, no. you see, you see, you see the teams up there. Like Barrow, I think are going to fade away. I think Crew are going to fade away. Um, Accrington and Gillingham in ninth and tenth are going to fade away. So, and we've got we've got the momentum. Why not? Why 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 can't we go as far as the playoffs? I, I think we can keep going. I think I think Barrow lost today quite convincingly against Wrexham. Could be the start of a losing run for them. So, yeah. And then Crew, they're nothing, are they? It's Crew, let's be honest. Well, funnily enough, <laughs> this time last year, we played Crew away on New Year's yeah. Day. And it was one yeah. of the most trammed performances you've ever seen. We were absolutely... terrible. Yeah. Well, actually, I thought we were, we were the better team for most of the game and then just got caught out and lost Good the punch. game. Absolute sucker punch mm-hmm. of a goal. In a much better position now than we were last New Year's Day. Um, yeah. It's nice to be looking at the league table with a smile on your face, and that's before you even look at Forest Green right down at the bottom. In Salford, fantastic. <laughs> Marvellous stuff. <laughs> One thing that is interesting, by the way, is that obviously Tramway play Barrow next weekend, as we've talked about. It's an FA Cup third round weekend, and that means there's a lot of teams not playing. There's only six fixtures in League Two next weekend. Wimbledon don't play, for example. MK Dons. Uh, don't play. There's no game for Gillingham. So several of the teams between Tranmere and that top seven are not in action next weekend. And that therefore means if Tranmere do get a win at Barrow, they will claw back another significant chunk of that disadvantage. Yes, teams will have games in hand, but that table will be looking even prettier if they do get those points next weekend. Um, We will be back to look ahead to Tramway against Barrow, or Barrow against Tramway, I should say, on Thursday with the news show. We'll also have uh, a review of the Barrow game as well. Uh, So please do uh, join us for those. Also, please, if you are uh, watching or if you're listening for the first time, please uh, hit the subscribe button as well. You can subscribe on YouTube for free and you'll get uh, clips uh, of every show on there. But also, if you subscribe on Patreon for £3 a month. You can listen through Patreon, you can listen through their app, or you can listen through Spotify, and you get access to all our shows and our extensive back catalogue of over 150 interviews with uh, former players and famous fans. Uh, I put out a bit of a best best of 2023 show yesterday, which is free to listen to, but Norwood was on there, uh, Scotty Davis, Dave Challoner, Jason McAteer, Max Power, just some of the guests uh, that we've had uh, recently. And another great one was Bruce Osterman, which I'd recommend you go and to listen back to as well, as he bought Tranmere in the 1980s, the first foreign owner ever of a uh, British football club when he bought Tranmere. And he talked uh, interestingly and in depth about his reign at the club. So thank you to all of us, uh, you for joining us. Uh, happy New Year to you. It is a very happy New Year at the moment and long may it continue. We will speak to you again very soon. <laughs>